Hey everyone! In this lecture, we're going to be looking at an idea called helicity, which turns up in a whole bunch of branches of physics, but we're going to be looking at it from the point of view of classical mechanics. So say you have a baseball that you threw in space, or close to zero gravity acting, so the ball travels straight in the direction it's thrown, and a lot of the time when people throw baseballs, we add a bit of spin to it intentionally or unintentionally, but that's how a baseball realistically moves. So how can we describe this mathematically? Well, looking at its straight line motion, we can describe that using its momentum vector, which is just its mass times velocity. How about its rotational motion? Well, a cool trick that physicists came up with is to look at the axis about which our ball is spinning and then to assign the ball a vector parallel to that axis according to the right hand rule. So your finger, if your fingers curl this way, your thumb points in the direction of the uh, vector. And we call that vector S. Obviously we can have the momentum and spin be oriented in a whole bunch of ways. So we can have the momentum and spin pointing like that. So it's spinning this way. Or we could have the momentum and spin being perfectly aligned. Um, which looks pretty satisfying and we could have it being perfectly anti-aligned so momentum pointing this way whereas it's spinning this way so how do we describe all of these different types of ways the ball could travel through space mathematically well it might be helpful to relate our two vectors here we have a spin and a momentum so if we have a momentum pointing this way and let's say for argument's sake we have a spin at an angle theta we can use the dot product of these vectors to look at the projection of our spin onto our momentum. Um, so s dot product with p is simply the length of s, so it's modulus, times the length of p, times the cosine of the angle between them. And this is a really cool quantity. It, it tells us how much of a shadow s casts on p. So if s and p are perfectly aligned, um, your dot product is maximized. If S and P are perfectly anti-aligned, uh, because they're 180 degrees apart, cause of that angle is negative one, um, we get the lowest possible value. So this brings us to the idea of helicity, which is denoted H. And helicity is just the dot product normalized by their lengths. And what this means is by substituting this expression here, into the numerator, we can see that this is just the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So it's a nice number that's always between minus one and one. And it, if we plot it out, it would always just be oscillating depending on the orientation of the two vectors. So yeah, helicity is a number that lies between negative one and one. Um, when helicity is one, the two vectors are perfectly aligned. When helicity is negative one, they're perfectly anti-aligned. And there any number in between here for these two other cases. And yeah, that's what helicity is. By the way, when a baseball travels through space with perfect helicity, it's called a gyro ball, which is um, a Japanese baseball throwing technique. Pretty cool.